now we'll start with permutations and combinations now it's such a wide topic that we could work at it for 100 hours and still not even scratch the surface you know one word could change the ask of the question completely but then gmat has only one or two questions based on this topic so we'll not waste a whole lot of time on it as long as you get the simple questions correct it's absolutely fine so in the videos we are going to focus on the basics of permutations and combinations and in case you do have time on your hands you can deep dive into it later so there are two main principles in permutations and we'll start with those now take an example say i go to a fast food place and there in the options they have say three different burger choices uh, b1 b2 and b3 and they have four different beverages choices so let's call them d1 d2 d3 and d4 so three burger choices and four beverages so of course i can choose a burger in three ways I, and i can choose a beverage in four ways in how many ways can i choose a meal so my meal is going to be food plus drink that is it is going to be one burger plus one beverage in how many ways can i do that can i do it in seven ways 3 plus 4 no i can do it in many more ways so say i choose my burger b1 then i can choose any one of the four drinks i can choose d1 or d2 or d3 or d4 now say i choose my burger b2 again i have four options for the beverages and if i choose b3 then also i have four options for the beverages so notice that in all these 12 cases four these four these and four these in all these 12 cases i make a different meal so this meal is b1 plus d1 this meal is b1 plus d2 this is different from a b1 plus d1 meal right here this meal is b2 plus d1 so here my burger is different from the b1 d1 meal if i compare b1 d1 to b2 d2 so you see that i make a different meal in all these 12 cases so in case i have to pick one burger and one beverage i can do it in 3 into 4 that is equal to 12 distinct ways i can make 12 distinct meals so in case i have to use and that is i have to pick one food and one drink then i can do it in 3 into 4 ways the multiplication of the number of different foods available and the number of different drinks available now uh, assume that at the same place i also have a choice of uh, two pizzas so i have a p1 and a p2 now in my meal i have to uh, take one food and one drink now my food could be either a burger or a pizza of course i can't eat both a burger and a pizza right so my my meal will only be either one burger or one pizza so out of these five now from the three burgers and two pizzas i have to choose only one so i have to choose either a burger or a pizza so then that means i have five options available for my food either a pizza or a burger so notice that i have an or over here i have to pick either a pizza or a burger so that is why total number of options for me is 2 plus 3 that is equal to 5 for my food now how many options are there for the meal of course now for the meal i have to pick one food plus one drink i have five options for my food and i have the same four options for my drink d1 d2 d3 d4 so total i have now 20 options again i'm multiplying 5 by 4 here why because i have to pick up a food and i have to pick up a drink 
So then total ways would be 20. Again, uh, notice that we have these 12 ways over here. Now we'll write P1 along with these four. Then P2 along with these four. So this will give me total 20 ways. So then this distinction between and and or is really important for you to figure out whether you have to add the numbers or multiply them. When you need to pick A or B, then the total ways of selection are A plus B. But when you need to pick A and B, then your total number of selections are AB. So if there are m ways of doing something and n ways of doing something else, then there are m plus n ways of doing one or the other and mn ways of doing both. Now we'll take a lot of examples which will show us how exactly these concepts are applied. So one, a restaurant serves five varieties of soups, eight different salads and four different desserts. In how many ways can one make a meal if one chooses one soup, one salad and one dessert? So then... I have to choose a soup. So I have a spot for a soup and a salad and a dessert. Now note that I have to choose a soup and a salad and a dessert. Now in how many ways can I choose a soup? I have five varieties of soup. Salads, I have eight varieties and desserts, I have four different desserts. So then the total number of ways in which I can make a meal such that I have to pick a soup and a salad and a dessert will be 5 into 8 into 4. Yeah. Now, six friends go to watch a movie. Only seat numbers 20 to 25 are available. So then we have six seats there are six distinct seats. We are given that they are 20 to 25. Now, in how many uh, ways can they occupy the six seats? And we have six friends. Of course, when we talk about people, six friends, we always assume that they are distinct. Of course, people are all different, right? So we can think of them as A, B, C, D, E, and F. So now... For seat number 20, now we have to place all the six friends on the six seats. So we have to make someone sit on 20 and on 21 and on 22 and on 23 and so on. Right? All right. So now how many ways are there to place someone on seat number 20? We have, let's say, six ways. We can make either A sit, B sit, C, D, E or F sit here. Let's say we've placed one of them over here. Now for seat number 21, we have five options. Now let's say we've placed someone over here also. So say we placed B over here. Say we placed D over here. Now we have four options remaining for seat number 22. Say we placed A over here. Now we have three options remaining for seat number 23. Do you see that now we have two options for 24 and we have only one option for 25. So say we place D here, B here, A here, then E here, then C here. Now we only have F left. So F must go on seat number 25. So this means that since, since we have to place people on all the seats on, a, on 20 and 21 and 22 and 23, the total number of ways in which we can place these six people on these six seats is 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. That is equal to 6 factorial. We've done factorials before in algebra. I review it in case you're not very sure about this. So then... This brings us to something that we call linear arrangements. What that means is that if we place n people in n distinct spots, right, or in, in a row, or let's say in a row, then we can do it in n factorial ways. So here we had to uh, place these six people in six spots and that is why we got that the number of ways in which we can do it is six factorial. 
ओके एग्जाम्पल थ्री इन हाउ मेनी वेज कैन सिक्स पीपल सिट ऑन सिक्स एडजेस सीट नंबर ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इन द फ्रंट रो ऑफ द थिएटर अगेन वी हैव सिक्स सीट्स uh if two of the friends anna and david must sit together so then anna and david these two must sit together so we put them together and we take them as one group we cannot separate the people out of them out of these two so we must put them together in a single group now if uh let's say we have b c e and f left and we can place them in any way uh, that we want <clears throat> so basically now we have to place these five individual slash groups right so how how can we do that we can do that in five factorial ways for example let's say we put b over here on the first spot then we put c over here on the second spot now let's say we pick up this group of ad and we'll place a here and d here four of our seats are occupied now next my option i'm just left with e and f so let's say i put f over here and i put e over here so for this spot i had five options i could place either b c e f or this group ad i could not split them so i didn't have six options i had only five for this one then i had only four options once i placed someone here for this one then i had only three options what were my three options either i could place ad or e or f now i picked ad over here now this ad occupied both this and this spot now for my i had to place someone over here and for this spot i only had now two options out of e and f and then for the last one i was left with only one option so in all i could place them in five factorial ways but one thing that we've not considered over here is that though we placed ad like this we could also place this group like this i could place d on this spot and i could place a on this spot so that is why i have to multiply by another two because there are two ways in which this group can be placed in each one of these five factorial arrangements so i multiply this by another two 